Okay, on the next step, we will key the exciter with no drive. Now, different transceivers, you have to do different things to get no drive levels. Uh, most of them, you just put your radio into SSD mode and you turn the mic gain and the RF power control is all the way to zero. And then by keying your mic uh, with the switch of the amplifier in operate position, and key the mic, the plate current meter should arise according to what the meter says. Here it says it should come up to 75 mils. And there we're reading uh, just below 100 mils. And it's got a 25% tolerance there it can be in. As we go through the next step, you'll place your transceiver back into CW, FM, or RTTY mode, whichever one will put out a carrier for you. And we're going to apply enough drive to indicate a grid current of 100 milliamps or an IP of no more than 450 milliamps. So this is basically saying that you will increase your drive power of your exciter until the grid meter reaches 100 mils or the plate current, whichever one comes first. Once it approaches that level, that's where you'll stop increasing drive. So I bring the drive up, and as I come up, my plate current is at 450. Now my grid is still at 50, so I stop because my plate current reached the maximum level first. Okay, now we're going to take and tune the plate tuning control by watching our forward power meter. Up here is our forward power meters. Um, we're going to watch these and while we transmit at the same time, we'll adjust the plate until I can get my power meter to peak. Wherever it peaks, that's the highest point the meter goes to. And then that's where I want to stop turning this knob. Now you may have to go counterclockwise or clockwise whichever way makes the power meter go to its highest point is the direction you go in until the meter stops climbing. After you have adjusted the plate control, we will then do the load control the very same way. You adjust your load control for peak output power by watching your external power meter. And then go back and touch the plate again. Plate control should always be the first knob and also the last knob to adjust when tuning the amplifier. Now at this moment we currently have 500 watts of RF going out of the amplifier and I have 450 mils of plate current <coughs> and 100 mils of grid current. Now. The maximum power of this amplifier happens to be 750 mils of plate current or 200 mils of grid current or an output power of 600 watts. So I can increase my drive if I want to run it up to max. By doing that, you'll either run the grid up to max or the plate current, whichever one comes first. So there my grid comes up as I increase drive. Now I'm going to go back and re-peak my plate control output power and then I'll repeat my load control for output power. Whichever one, let me go back and retune the plate as the last tuning control. Now there I'm at 150 mils of grid and 600 mils of plate current. Now my output power has already been approached. Uh, so I'm already maxed out on my output power. So that means I cannot increase drive anymore. Once you have done this process, you just switch the transceiver over to side bin and you're ready for operation. Just by speaking through the microphone, the radio should start operating. Hello, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Hello, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. Testing, one, two, three. Now notice this, uh, when I'm in CW mode, 
notice how high the meters come up. When you're in CW, FM, or RTTY mode, you put out a constant carrier so the meters stay steady. This way you can see your peaks of your output power. And notice our watt meters, how far they come over. Uh, they're coming over to like 700 watts here. And they both agree with each other here. One is just a Model 43 bird meter. It has no peak reading circuit to it. The, the other meter is a bird meter that has a, a peak meter in it. So that when you operate, it actually reads voice peaks. And this is the difference between a peak reading and a, just an average peak or just a average meter. So as we go to sideband and we speak through the microphone, we'll see that if we look at the meters here, that the plate and grid meters of the amplifier, they're not fast enough to respond to voice peaks. So the meters on the amplifier will only read a third of the plate and grid current that I'm putting out. So you'll notice here that the meter here is only coming up to a third of the scale of where it was previously. And then if we look at our power meter here, we can see that my power, uh, as I talk, the power meter stays up around close to about 700 watts output power. But if we look at just the average meter of the bird, it's only reading somewhere around about 100 watts is all it is showing. So this gives you an idea of if you only got just the amplifier meters to look at and just an average meter, always remember that when you're in sideband, you have to triple what the currents say on the amplifier. And you might even, depends on the power meter that you have, if it's an average peak reading meter, you'll add double that meter, so it'll be 50%. Uh, you'll add to what you're putting out. Or, if, for instance, if you have this time uh, bird meter, it would be a 60 six times what you're actually putting out, so it's reading 100 watts, whereas we're really putting out uh, almost 700 watts of RF output. Now also during this time, if you want to use the ALC circuit, we have the ALC disconnected. So if you want to set your ALC, you go back to CW position, you will uh, plug your ALC line in from the radio to the amplifier. And then this amplifier here, the ALC adjustment is on the back of it. So with that adjustment you will take and while you're transmitting in CW, FM, or RTTY, you'll adjust the ALC control on the back until the plate and grid meters come right back up to where they were at when you previously tuned the amplifier. And if you slightly turn the ALC, you'll see it begin to reduce the output power, the plate current, or the grid current. And at that time, you can even turn the drive power of your transceiver all the way up, and it will maintain that drive level all the time, whereas it only lets your radio put out. Here, we're using 50 watts to drive the amplifier but I have the power control turned all the way up, so that means the ALC is holding the transceiver at 50 watts when the amplifier is operating. If you put the amplifier in standby mode, it will let the power meter go up to the full 100 watts output. Or if you have the amplifier turned off, it will also allow your radio to put out full power. The ALC only works when the amplifier is in on position and in operating.